Welcome to Biology My Passion. I'm Soumya Harikrishna. Let us learn about the photosynthetic experiments. We know that photosynthesis requires different factors. Carbon dioxide, water, sunlight, chlorophyll. So we are going to see certain experiments to prove that see, these factors are necessary for photosynthesis. So first let us see carbon dioxide. When we do a photosynthetic experiment, whether it is for carbon dioxide, chlorophyll or sunlight, the certain steps are common. How do we know that photosynthesis has taken place or not? We have to see the final product. If starch is produced, photosynthesis has taken place. If starch is not produced, photosynthesis has not taken place. So if I want to test, carbon dioxide is necessary for photosynthesis. I don't give carbon dioxide and without carbon dioxide if starch is forming okay photosynthesis has taken place carbon dioxide is not necessary for photosynthesis but if no starch formation yes carbon dioxide was necessary for photosynthesis this is how we are testing so final stage should be starch test for any photosynthetic experiment now one more problem here simply if I take a plant I am not giving carbon dioxide, I am testing for starch. But we know starch is the stored form of food. It may be stored even before that. That result may show. So first and foremost, what should we do? We have to de-starch the plant. De-starch means what? Remove the starch. How can we remove starch from a plant? Take the plant and keep it in a dark room for almost 48 hours that means two to three days you have to keep it in dark room so that the plant will not do photosynthesis and whatever starch is present will be used up by the time so when we take out after the two days or three days from the dark room the plant is devoid of starch now we can start experiment so first stage in any photosynthetic experiment should be de-starching the plant by keeping it in a dark room for 48 hours okay so that, should, that is a compulsory step. And most of the experiments we use potted plants because we have to transfer the plant to the dark room then back to the normal condition. So we need potted plants so that the movement is easy. Now let us see how the starch test is done. The final stage after whatever experiment, what is the final starch test? We know we can test the presence of starch by using iodine, right? Iodine is a reagent which gives blue-black color in the presence of starch. So here, the experimental leaf that we have to pluck from the plant after our experiment and boil it in water. Why do we need to boil it in water? To kill or stop all the activities. Then boil it in alcohol using water bath. After boiling it in water, after killing or stopping activities, then we have to use it or we have to boil it in alcohol but we have to use a water bath that means we are not directly boiling it we keep it in another water bath and then indirectly boiling it because alcohol is highly inflammable you have to be really careful about this experiment so why are we he heating it in alcohol once you keep it in alcohol alcohol will dissolve all the chlorophyll so we can see the result very evidently so removing chlorophyll is the function or the reason why we are heating it in alcohol but once you take out the leaf from alcohol it will be almost dry because alcohol is a strong dehydrating agent so we have to again rinse it with water or you can just dip in water it will become rehydrated again now we can add iodine so that if blue black color appears presence of starch is confirmed if no blue black color presence of starch is not confirmed right so this is how we are going to do experiment so the first step and last step common for all now let us discuss various factors first we will see carbon dioxide is necessary for photosynthesis okay our first experiment is carbon dioxide is necessary for photosynthesis so first we are selecting two potted plants almost equal size and what is the first step we are keeping it in a dark room for three days in order to remove the starch now we take out the plants and we are taking it so just we are naming it this is a and this is b 
and in the setup A, I am keeping a small dish containing potassium hydroxide. Potassium hydroxide is a reagent that can absorb carbon dioxide. In the second one, am I keeping it? No. Now, both these I am covering with a bell jar. And the bottom of the bell jar is sealed using some Vaseline. Just to make it airtight, so no more air will be available to the plant. Now, in the first thing, what happens? First setup, carbon dioxide is absorbed by KOH. So, there is no carbon dioxide inside the bell jar for the plant during photosynthesis. Whereas, in the other one, setup B, carbon dioxide is available because carbon dioxide is there in the air. So, we will keep this setup 2-3 hours in the sunlight for the photosynthesis to happen. But we don't know whether photosynthesis will happen in the absence of carbon dioxide. So, after that, what do we do? We remove the glass jar and we take one leaf from each. Suppose, this is from sample A, this is from sample B. In both, we have to do starch test. How do we do starch test? First, put the leaves in the boiling water to kill the activities. Transfer them to alcohol and uh, you, you boil them using a water bath to remove chlorophyll. Rinse it to rehydrate and put iodine. So, which one of this will turn blue-black color? Just think, in which photosynthesis must have happened? They are starch produced. If starch is present, blue-black will appear. In which one of this? Yes, this one will turn blue-black. Because here carbon dioxide was available. So, the plant used carbon dioxide for preparing starch during photosynthesis and photosynthesis happened. But in the first one, what happened? In A, the carbon dioxide was not available. The, so, the plant could not do photosynthesis. So, starch was not produced. So, here no starch. So, no blue-black coloration. So, this experiment shows that carbon dioxide is necessary for photosynthesis. Now, let us see the next experiment to prove sunlight is necessary for photosynthesis. So, here we are taking again a potted plant. What is the first step? We destarched it, keeping it in dark room. Now taken out. After taking it out, we are covering a part of the leaf using a black paper strip. Okay? And now we are exposing the plant to sunlight for next few hours. After that, we are plucking that leaf. And we are doing the starch test. Boil in water, boil in alcohol, rinse and finally add iodine. So what will be your observation? Will this leaf completely turn blue-black? Or only part of this will turn blue-black? What will be your observation? Just think. Yes, here only this part which was covered with black paper strip will not turn blue-black. Whereas the rest of the leaf will turn blue-black. What does this indicate? This part could not get sunlight. So couldn't do photosynthesis. We covered both the sides, both upper and lower sides were covered, so the light could not reach there. So this part could not do photosynthesis, no starch was prepared, no blue-black color. But rest of the leaf turns blue-black because of the presence of starch. So we can understand from this that sunlight is necessary for photosynthesis. Our next experiment is to prove that chlorophyll is necessary for photosynthesis. You know, usually all plants have green leaves. But there are certain plants where leaves have other colored patches as well. Those leaves are called a variegated leaves. So for this particular experiment, we need plants with variegated leaves. So what do we do? We keep the potted plant in dark room, destarch, take it out. And for our reference, we can first mark the areas which are green in color in a tracing sheet of paper later to compare. And now we are keeping it in sunlight. So, we are allowing it to photosynthesis and after that what happens? We take out a pluck a leaf and do the iodine test. Kill the leaf by boiling it in water, remove chlorophyll by boiling in alcohol, then rinse it with water and finally add iodine. Which part do you think would turn blue in color, blue black in color? Yes, it is this green color part only will turn blue black at the end after iodine test which shows that only green color part could do photosynthesis and produce starch. Why? Only green color part has chlorophyll in it. So from this we can understand chlorophyll is necessary for photosynthesis.
Through the experiment, we saw that carbon dioxide is necessary for photosynthesis. So, exchange of gas is taking place through certain holes present on the surface of leaf called a stomata. So, the stomata are doing two functions. One, gaseous exchange, whereas second is called transpiration. Transpiration is the loss of water in the form of water vapor through aerial parts of the plant. Now, let us see the structure of stomata. The stomata is actually having two kidney shaped cells. These cells are called guard cells. As the name suggests, they are guarding this opening. This opening is actually called the stomatal pore or stomatal opening. The guard cells have very thick wall inside. So the inside wall is very thick. Whereas its outside wall is thin. Because this adaptation is to facilitate its function. And inside the guard cells, there is nucleus and chloroplast. So, what are the structures do you see inside the, uh, the guard cells? Nucleus and chloroplast. Now, where are we seeing these stomata? On the epidermis. So, there are epidermal cells surrounding the stomata. These cells are also called as subsidiary cells. So this is the guard cell which has chloroplast and nucleus in it. So this, this is the stoma or the stomatal pore, the opening. So the whole structure together called as stomatal apparatus. So uh, we know that stomata need not be open all the time. Whenever the plant needs to have gaseous exchange or transpiration, it needs to open the stomata. So there should be a regulatory mechanism to open and close. So it is done by the guard cells. So the guard cells can open and close whenever uh, it is required. How, how can guard cells open and close stomata? When water enters the guard cells, guard cells will swell up and stomata will be opened. Suppose if you can see my hands, so imagine this part is the inner wall of the guard cell. So this part is the outer wall, thin wall. So when water enters, the guard cell will start bulging out or swelling. At the same time it swells, finally it will open the stomata, pulling the inner wall also apart. But once water goes out, it will close back. So, the opening and closing of stomata is a function of guard cells. Okay, so this is the overall structure of stomata and these are the functions of stomata. So, we have come to an end of autotrophic nutrition. Hope you understand the concepts well. If you like my videos, please like, share and subscribe to my channel.